Hello everybody, I'm Sean Spaulding from YoYo Games, and in this tutorial series I'm going to be showing you step by step how to write your very first video game in Game Maker Studio 2 using GML code. So throughout this series we're going to be building a top down action game that will look something like this, and it's going to have a player and a score and some baddies to shoot at. We're going to keep it really simple and low level, but hopefully we're going to teach you just enough about the key mechanics of Game Maker so that you can then go off and start making just about whatever you can imagine. So what we're actually going to try and achieve in this part of the tutorial is we're just going to create a player object on the screen uh, that we can move around. That's it, we're just going to make a little player, move them around the screen, and that's all you'll be able to do. Um, in order to do that, we need to create a couple of things. The first thing we need to make is a sprite for our player, okay? It's going to basically be the image that represents him. The sprite is just any kind of image in your game. So we'll right click where it says Sprites and hit create and that will create a sprite editor inside the workspace. It's worth noting that you can move around the workspace at any time just by holding the middle mouse button and dragging around. Um, you can hold control and zoom in and out um, basically infinitely in all directions. Okay so here is our sprite. I'm going to first of all give it a name. I'm going to call it SPR underscore player. Okay, my naming convention there is to just, uh, and I use this for all different types of resources, is to basically use uh, three letters that represent what type of resource it is, followed by an underscore, followed by some name that's relevant to whatever that resource happens to be. This is going to be for our player, so it's called our player sprite, okay? So next up I actually just want to actually import our uh, player sprite into the project. Um, this is our player sprite. A spinning UFO disc and um, if you're watching this series on YouTube you can download all of the assets used throughout the series from the video description um, if you're watching it from inside the IDE uh, all those resources should be there for you so the sprite editor shows us uh, our sprite here that we've imported our image and uh, down here at the bottom it would be showing us multiple frames if this were an animated sprite and say if we imported a gif or imported a number of frames uh, all the frames would show down here and you can play and preview that animation uh, from here, um, you can also go to edit the image with the built-in image editor, but we're not going to touch on that in this particular part. Um, you can also, if you just click around the image, you see I'm moving around this crosshair. Uh, the crosshair indicates the origin point for our sprite, okay? The origin point is basically considered the center point of your sprite, and um, you'll see why later on as we start to do more things, and uh, you see how sprites work in the game. Um, to see why it's important to make sure that uh, origin point is correctly positioned. But for now, just make sure that you use, by just using this drop down list up here, that you select middle center and it'll automatically line itself up there. As I say, you can click around to place it manually or you can type in specific coordinates for it up here in the top if you want to. So now that we have our sprite, the next thing we want to do is create our player object. Okay, Objects are where we actually define all the interactivity and logic in the game Okay, and make these lovely images that we've put into the game actually do things. Okay, So I'm going to right click in objects and hit create and then it'll pop up a, uh, an object editor for us down here and scroll us to it automatically and I'm going to call it obj underscore player as I said earlier and you can see that naming convention and, and why we're doing that now so we can distinguish between the player and uh, the player sprite and the player object okay the next thing I want to do is actually link this object to the sprite that we just created so over here where it says sprite uh, by default an object doesn't have any sprite in which case it would be invisible in the game but we're gonna link this to SPR underscore player okay so now that we have this object I mean we haven't actually set up any logic for him yet but we'll do that in a second let's uh, put him into the game world and actually see the game for the first time so over here uh, on the resource tree you'll notice a category called rooms. Um, if you actually open that up you'll notice a room's already been created for you just called uh, room zero. Um, we create this room for you by default because every game maker game needs to have at least one room in order to be able to actually run. If I double click that um, it'll open up the room editor. As you can see this gets its own workspace. Okay, It's separate from the main workspace and um, allows us to actually define uh, everything in our rooms. Rooms can be thought of best probably as the levels or screens of your game. They're kind of containers where you organize and distribute all your different objects and uh, tiles and backgrounds and so on and so forth um, to sort of arrange the different elements of your video game. So I'm just, at the moment we just have this default uh, big black rectangle, okay? We can turn this grid off, this is what it will actually look like in the game, that grid's just there to help you place things. And um, if I go ahead and just click and drag uh, our player object, you can see it pops up in the world here, and I can just let go of the mouse and place him there. If I hold Alt uh, while I have um, 
an object selected in the resource tree, I can actually sort of paint them all over the place, uh, but we only want the one player. Now we actually have everything we need to run the game for the first time and see our uh, majestic, very uh, complicated uh, creation. Yeah, there it is, just a big black rectangle made in Gaming Studio 2. Uh, with uh, a player that doesn't do anything in the middle of the screen, okay? <laughs> Congratulations, you've made your first video game, kind of. So uh, nothing actually happens in here, so that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so now we actually need to go back to our player object. So the quickest way to do that is to just double click on obj underscore player, and it'll bring us straight back to our workspace exactly where uh, we left off. Okay, you can see we've got this events window here and it doesn't have anything in it yet. This is where we set up all of the actual logic and interactivity for our objects and therefore our game. Uh, an event can be best thought of as uh, a when this happens, okay? So when something happens, uh, events are triggered and then they lead to actions which will appear over here. Okay, so events can be things like when the object is created, uh, when the object is destroyed, um, every frame of the game that passes, uh, pressing the left arrow key, and so on and so forth. The event that we're going to add is the step event. So go over to step, and there's three different types. We're just going to worry about the main step event. Okay, and click that, and you can see a big code window appears. So as I said, the best way to think of events and actions is in terms of events are when this thing happens, and actions are do this, okay? So when the step event happens, do whatever code we put into this box. The step event's a special event. Um, it's triggered every single frame of the game that passes, so or every step of the game, which means basically a frame of the game. Um, so at 60 frames a second, uh, the step event will happen 60 times in one second, so it's just going to happen on a loop while this object is in the game world. Okay, so now we're ready to write our very first line of GML code. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make the player object move to the right just endlessly. So I'm going to take its x coordinate by just typing x equals and then itself plus 4, okay? You see x turned green there because it's a recognized property of the object um, and uh, 4 turned red just because it's a number. And uh, we're just taking our x coordinate and setting it to be equal to itself plus four. Okay, really, really simple thing to do. So every single frame of the game, modify our x-coordinate by adding four to it. Now we can see this working already, just if we run the game, and there he goes. Our object just moves to the right forever, and he goes off the screen, and he will just carry on moving to the right forever. No one can ever stop him. Uh, until we close the game. Now he's been stopped. And as you can see, I added this uh, semicolon on the end of uh, x equals x plus 4, I forgot to mention. Uh, that's just the standard good practice way to um, signify to Game Maker that this line of code has officially ended. Okay, There's only a couple of edge cases where this will um, specifically be very important to make sure you let Game Maker know where your line properly ends, but it's very good practice because of those edge cases to make sure you always do it. So Game Maker would be absolutely fine if I just typed x equals x plus 4, it would do the exact same thing and I could go down here and type more lines of code and uh, it, it wouldn't matter that I didn't put the semicolon on the end. But it's very good practice to do so, will matter in a few edge case scenarios that you'll learn about as you learn more about coding. And there's also generally good practice throughout code and programming in general. It's a very standard practice to have some official signatory way of ending a line, and it usually is a semicolon. So now we want to make it a bit more complicated than this. The game still isn't really very interesting. So what we want to do is make it so that instead of just moving four pixels to the right every single frame of the game, we only move four pixels to the right if the user is pressing the right arrow key. Okay, we're going to start to build up our movement controls. So how do we do that? Well, let's bring this down here for a second. And what we're going to do is we're going to use what's called an if statement. Okay, it's a function of Game Maker. If I type i and then f, you can see it turns yellow the moment it becomes the word if. It's a, a built-in function, and you can tell any built-in function, like if I just type one randomly underneath, because it'll turn yellow immediately afterwards. And most of these require you to provide some sort of data or info, um, uh, what's called arguments to them, okay? And you do that by opening a pair of brackets and closing them and typing whatever that information is in those pair of brackets. For an if statement, what it does is it checks a condition, and that's the condition you apply in the uh, inside the brackets, and it says if that condition is true, perform the following. Okay, so think of it like a, a mini event inside the event, okay? We're going to check to see if some condition happens to be true at this point in time, 
on this particular frame when this is run, then perform whatever code we want to come afterwards. Okay, we can either type code immediately afterwards, or we can open a pair of curly braces like this and perform a ton of code inside them, okay? And then if whatever happens in here is true, this stuff gets carried out. Okay, but we only need the one line for now. So inside this pair of brackets, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use another function um, to check to see whether or not our arrow key is being pressed, okay? It's called keyboard underscore check. Okay, and you see that then turns yellow in the exact same way. Um, and then because it's a function, it also requires an argument. So I'm gonna open and uh, close another pair of brackets and inside this pair of brackets, I'm gonna tell it which key I want it to check. It's our right arrow key and we represent that with VK underscore right. Okay, now you might be thinking, oh, keyboard check, VK right, I mean, I was with you at wit, uh, if, but uh, how am I supposed to remember all these things? But trust me that it really isn't, a, it seems intimidating now, but it gets a lot easier the more you practice and you can always refer to the documentation in our help menu and there's a full list of every single command um, available to you with descriptions of what they all do. So you can look them up for reminders or to seek out functions you might not know exist yet. There's plenty of functions I don't even know about uh, in KMaker Studio too. Um, but uh, it does get a lot easier over time. For now, you just have to sort of stick with it and try and learn it, and I will show you and uh, explain to you each line of code as we use them. So now that we've typed this line out, what I'm gonna do is, because uh, at the moment these two things are happening separately, so it's doing this if check, then doing nothing, and then just moving those four pixels to the right. So I wanna put this uh, statement on the end of this if statement, okay? So when this if statement happens, it says if, Whatever happens inside this bracket is true, which happens to be keyboard check VK right, uh, which will be true when we're pressing the right arrow key and will be false whenever we're not, or zero and one, whichever way you'd like to think of it. Uh, if that stuff is true, then perform the following, which is X equals X plus four. Now, if we run the game, and see when I press the right arrow key, we move to the right. You'll just have to take my word for it and the sounds of my keyboard to know that it's when I'm pressing the right arrow key, but uh, uh, hopefully you guys trust me on that. Okay, so now to finish off this part of the tutorial, all we're gonna do is make it so we can move in every other direction, okay? And we do it in the same way. So we're just gonna copy this line of code and I'm gonna paste it four times, well, three times, okay? So we've got four lines of code. Um, if you don't know, I did that just by selecting the line, pressing Control and C, and then, um, selecting beneath the line and pressing Control and V to paste the line, just as you would in any word editor, okay? Um, so at the moment, we, we don't actually just want four of this, otherwise when we press the right arrow key, we'll move 16 pixels of frame to the right, and we won't want that. Okay, so we want to check to see when the left arrow key is being pressed, as you might imagine, is VK underscore left, it's the appropriate constant there, uh, when the up arrow key is being pressed, and when the down arrow key is being pressed. Okay, and now the correct response to each one of those is not x equals x plus four, but for left it's x equals x minus four. Okay, so we're gonna subtract four from our x coordinate every single frame to move us to the left. And for up, we don't wanna be working with our x coordinate, we wanna be working with our y coordinate. Okay, that's our vertical coordinate. The lower it is, the higher you are up the screen, and the higher it is, the further down the screen you are, okay? So um, if since we want to move up, we want to move up to a lower y position, so we want to subtract 4 from y. And then when we want to move down, we want to move up our y coordinate, okay, which will move us further down the screen. Just think of it this way, x, y of 0, 0 is the top left of your screen, okay? So in order to move further to the right, we increase our x coordinate, and to move further down, we increase our y coordinate, and so on. Now, once you put all those things in, um, you can run the game again. And we're presented with our black screen up player again, and now I can move around. Just to round this out, I'm gonna do one more thing on top of this, okay? I'm gonna actually make it so, just to be a bit more interesting, we'll make the player point towards our current mouse coordinate, okay? So as opposed to just sort of uh, 
floating around the screen and with this sort of line in the middle we're going to make it actually sort of angle itself to face towards wherever our mouse is on the screen so how do we do that well we can modify the facing of our image or like the rotation of our image by typing image underscore angle see that turns green in the same way our x coordinate turned green and our y coordinate turned green it's a built-in property of the object okay it's a built-in object variable that we can change and manipulate to do certain things. Okay, our image angle by default is zero, and it goes from zero all the way to 360, okay? Zero is considered to be facing to the right, and so you increase that by any number of degrees to face that degree direction, okay? So the direction we want to point, and remember this happens every single frame of the game, so let's be constantly updated, is point underscore direction. You see that turns yellow, it's a function, meaning it's going to return a value based on values that we put into it. Okay, opening a bracket and closing a bracket because we're going to put some data in here. And you can see at the bottom it actually tells you what data we need to provide. We need to provide an x coordinate, uh, well, we need to provide an x and a y coordinate, so a position in space and a second position in space, okay? And then it works out the angle between them. So we're going to take our current x and y coordinate as uh, the first coordinate. So that's wherever we happen to be on the screen is what we've been using to move around. And we're going to take the coordinates of our mouse, which we can receive just by typing mouse underscore x. You can see that's also green. It's a built-in uh, built property. And mouse underscore y. Okay, so those variables always... You, you can't actually change mouse x and mouse y. Um, what they do is they always contain every single frame they always contain the mouse coordinates okay so the mouse is x coordinate and the mouse is y coordinate in the in the current room okay so we can take our current uh, object coordinate the mouse's coordinates and we're going to find the angle between them and set that to be our sprites angle okay and that line of the semicolon and run the game and after it's compiled you find we move our mouse around the player faces towards our mouse Okay, and we can still move around with the arrow keys and so on. So we have our basic movement on the go here. There's a lot we'll change about it and we'll make it uh, different in various ways as we carry on with the uh, series. But for now, this is just a player moving around the screen. Uh, that's the very, very basics of most of uh, the main elements of Game Maker. And uh, we'll see you in part two where we'll look at actually creating some projectiles and doing some more interesting things. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Hope you'll be watching the rest of the series and uh, hope you'll find it all very useful. We can't wait to see what sort of awesome stuff you guys get up to and make with Game Maker Studio 2.